Ever since the market bottom late October, the railroad stocks have just been roaring. Union Pacific, Norfolk Southern, CSX, of anywhere from 17 to 23 percent over the past few months. For the better part of two years, we had a freight recession as consumers switched from buying actual stuff to spending their money on services and experiences. But late last year, we started seeing signs that the freight recession was ending. And then the rails, they caught fire. So can they keep chugging along? If you, like me and Jay Powell, feel pretty sanguine about the economy, maybe it makes sense to stick with this group. We've heard the truckers report great intermodal numbers. Those are those containers that go from ships to trains to trucks. So good news for the rails. At the same time, we know that these shipping disruptions in the Red Sea have forced many companies to take their goods to the West Coast rather than going through the Suez Canal, then the Mediterranean, then the Atlantic to get to the East Coast. Boy, is that terrific for the West Coast operators. Now you're thinking about Union Pacific and Canadian Pacific Kansas City. I I hate that name. Uh, Of course, the flip side of that is fewer ships go to the ports on the East Coast, which does hurt CSX and definitely Norfolk Southern. Now, what did the railroads have to say when they reported over the last couple of weeks? And so all the numbers are in. We've now heard from CSX, Norfolk Southern, Union Pacific, Canadian Pacific, Kansas City. So far, I'm calling them three for four. Not bad. Things got going last Wednesday when CSX turned some really solid set of numbers, better than expected. Even as their sales were down 1% year over year and their earnings were down 8%. More importantly, though, we saw some stabilization in volumes, which were up 1% year over year, led by automotive. Five is 9 percent, as well as chemicals up 5 percent, fertilizers up 4 percent, and metal and equipment as well as coal, both up 3 percent. For the rails, volume growth comes first, then pricing power and revenue growth fall. Now, this was CSX's first quarter of positive volume growth since the third quarter of 2022, so I'm calling that a major term. Even better, management's full year outlook was pretty darn encouraging. CSX doesn't give you much in the way of specific guidance, but they did say that, and I'm going to quote, they expect total volume and total revenue growth in the low to mid-single digit range. That's incremental progress after volume and revenue both dropped 1% last year. The trend is coming for the merchandise and intermodal businesses. Fantastic. Plus, CSX says they're taking market share thanks to strong service levels. They tend to take it away just so you know, from, from trucks, but also from trains. They can take it from another train. Madman did guide for the $2.5 billion in capital spending this year, which is $300 million more than what the analysts were looking for. But the good news definitely outweighed the bad here. And that's why the stock rallied nearly 3% over the last two days after the quarter. Joe Hinrich, this new CEO, he's from Ford, by the way. He's got a great industrial background, and he's also making that train run on time. Call him bankable. Next was another one of my favorites, Union Pacific, which reported last Thursday morning and even had better numbers than CSX. A UNP's revenue came in higher than expected, even if it was flat year over year. And they're operating much more efficiently with costs very much under control. By the way, that's the metric a lot of the analysts follow. It's called the operating ratio. It's translated into a 13 cent earnings speed off of $2.58 basis. And I'm telling you, that's very good. Now, Union Pacific's volume trends were similar to what we saw from CSX, but better on absolute uh, basis. Total revenue correlates were up 3%, led by strong growth from fertilizer of 15%, which surprised me because fertilizer prices are not higher. Energy and specialty, uh, specialized markets up 9%. Industrial chemical and plastic up 7 Intermodal up 5%. These are amazing numbers for when the Fed has been tightening and tightening and tightening. They're very strong. One of the reasons why I think J-PAL is not off base today. For Union Pacific, this was the first quarter of positive volume since the fourth quarter of 2022. Hey, now you should know that Union Pacific's mostly qualitative guidance for 2024 was a little bit muted. Uh, maybe conserved, guarded? Pick your adjective. Their outlook for key cargoes was overall mixed. They had positive things to say about fertilizers, petroleum, and petrochemicals, and automotive. But they were more negative on coal, construction, intermodal, uh, international intermodal. Plus, Union Pacific noted that there was a slower start to 2024, in part because of these severe winter storms seen earlier this month. Overall, the company said, I'm going to quote here, the economic environment continues to look muted in 2024, particularly in the first half. Doesn't make me want to jump up and down and buy it. However, the CEO is the seasoned hand, Jim Venna. He is a real operator. And he sounded much more optimistic about the second half, so it's okay to buy the stock now. i got to wonder whether some of the areas where they're being conserved might actually turn out to be better than expected. In particular, it's true that many ships are being rerouted to ports on the West Coast thanks to these militants turned pirates in Yemen. I think the intermodal business might turn out very strong. Because of that, the Red Sea problem. Clearly, many buyers are on the same page because Union Pacific stock jumped 2% after reporting. All right, now. Let's get address the third one, because in many ways, this is my favorite. Canadian Pacific, Kansas City, which has that unwieldy name, thanks to the old Canadian Pacific merger with KC Southern. These numbers are distorted by the deal, but the revenues and earnings came in nicely higher than expected. Meanwhile, the company saw 4% volume growth, best in the group. 
Looking forward, Canadian Pacific guide for double-digit earnings growth this year. Very positive. Management is saying that, that, that uh, between their post-merger synergy opportunities and an improving economy, the company can continue to put up strong numbers, I believe. Them. That was enough to push the stock up 1% today. Remember, in a terrible tape, I really like this stock in part because I have a place next to the tracks in Mexico. I've studied enough about this darn thing to know that they are crushing it. All right, how about a disappointment? Ah, geez, this one hurt. Last Thursday night, Norfolk Southern reported a stinker of a quarter. It really was. Got hit with three down grades the next day. Stock's been a serious liar for the past year, uh, ever since one of its trains derailed in East Palestine, Ohio. Nearly a year ago, Norfolk Southern just hasn't been the be- best operator. I mean, I, I, it just hasn't been. Stocks led the group since the market bottom in October, but only because it had much more room to play catch-up. And when they reported this time, Norfolk Southern had revenues that were down 5% year over year. <laughs> A bit below expectations, and even when you strip out the cost related to the East Palestine crash, their earnings were down 17%. Now, worse than expected. As Stiefel's Benjamin Nolan put it when he downgraded the stock next day, Norfolk Southern has long been an underperforming self-help story that simply can't figure out how to help themselves. And this quarter, that trend turns uh, look to be continuing, end quote. And boy, does that ever sum it up. Here's the best thing I can say about Norfolk Southern. Stock only went down 1.5% on Friday, which is much better than it arguably deserved. I've been thinking, when a stock barely gets dinged on bad news, it's possible the negatives are all baked in, or, and that's a suboptimal situation, but this might be a very good stock for an activist to come in. I know if I were in that activist business, I would take a hard look at this stock, and I certainly wouldn't sell the stock to them if they're accumulating position. Bottom line, with the freight recession ending and the disruption in ocean shipping, we've got a situation that's clearly better for the railroads than others. You've got to focus on this group. If you feel okay about the economy, and I do like these for my channel trust, then you've got my blessing to stick with Union Pacific, Canadian Pacific, or CSX, in that order, by the way, and forget about Norfolk Southern for the moment, unless you want to speculate on an oncoming train of activists on their way. Let's go to Nick in Maryland. Nick. Booyah, Mr. Jimmy Chill. I like that. I like this guy. I like that, Nick. I like what Nick has to say. Love the macro views on the markets. It's great. It's great. Thank you. Um, So I got a stock. It's made incredible, incredible runs in the short term, up 100% in the past two months, undervalued by analysts, incredible dividend yield. I think the shipping container industry is showing some more stability as of late. Do I buy or hold ticker ZIM? You know, I've been thinking it is Zim's time. It is Eli Glickman's time. I think you can speculate on this one. The stock is down very big. They're not making a lot of money. Uh, they don't have it. Uh, the, but this is, the, I, well, I you know what? It's their time. How about we go to Gregory, my home state, New Jersey. Gregory. Hey, Jim. Booyah. How you doing? I don't know. It depends on what part of the state you're from. Uh, Union City, New Jersey. Yes, the home of Smarties. Yes. <laughs> well, Listen, I got a question. Um, I recently took a position in RTX, and I'm wondering, with the current geopolitical situation, is it a hold, or should I look to add? Um, Is there any outsized, non-systemic political risk that I should— No, no, and you can buy it, Greg. I spoke with Greg Hayes after that last quarter. He delivered a really good quarter. They put that problem behind him about the gear turbo fan. I wish the stock would come in. Let's not buy any more above 90, okay? But I, this one I wanted to uh, put in the channel trust. I wanted to put it in the bullpen, but it just moved up too fast. I say congratulations to you for buying it when you did. RTX is a winner. If you feel okay about the economy, you do have my blessing. You stick with, and I got a bunch of them here because I like this group. Union Pacific, Canadian Pacific, or CSX. And do not forget, Norfolk Southern should have gone down more. Don't understand, other than it looks like activist possibility. Much more made money in. Thermo Fisher was a big winner in the COVID era. But now that the stock is starting to slow, what do you do with it? I'm digging the story, and I got to tell you, this is a legendary company. Then a judge in Delaware struck down Elon Musk's Tesla pay package. And I got to take on this ruling. I think it's going to surprise you. Uh, not as much as he's surprising, but you never know. And all your calls rapid fire tonight's edition of the lighting round. So stay with Kramer. Don't miss a second of Mad Money. Follow at Jim Cramer on X. Have a question? Tweet Cramer. Hashtag Mad Mentions. Send Jim an email to madmoney at cnbc.com or give us a call at 1-800-743-CNBC. Miss something? Head to madmoney.cnbc.com.